talking about sample and population a very good experiment i have i am cooking some rice now if i take the whole of the pot the rice in the container it is the population and when i try to taste one spoon of that saying whether the rice has been cooked or not what is that that is a sample so this is a very fundamental understanding of the population and the sample from a population so population technically speaking if i say is the entire group of people to which a researcher tries to study in order to find out some of the inferences or to derive the inferences from the study of the whole set of the group that is there however when we talk about sample it's similarly a random group of people that is being selected from the whole so similarly when i taste one spoon of rice and i say it is cooked now that statement that i say that it is cooked is not just applied to that spoon but it is applied to the whole set of the rice in the pot so when i am trying to work on the sample i am able to understand the whole of the population and that's the basis that we apply in most of the statistical analysis so in order to make the generalizations to make the predictions much more simpler much more easier this is what we do there are two basic categories under which we can understand this process of sampling so this process of sampling if i want to understand it could be either a random sampling or a haphazard sampling now a very very important concept a lot of you get confused between what is a random sample and what is a haphazard sample just to clear out all the doubts we have a very simple example here so when i am taking that spoon of rice and tasting what i am trying to do is i am trying to pick up a sample from the whole set of the population that represents the whole set of population okay and in that case there is equal chance of being selected for each of the rice particles that is there but let's take another case <clears throat> where i am cooking the rice but there is let's say half cooked rice or um, uh the bottom rice has been cooked and still there is top rice that is yet to be cooked but let's say i am in a hurry i just take up the topmost sample and taste it then definitely that sample is not representing the whole of the rice that is there that means under haphazard sam sampling what you do is you just pick up the sample as per your convenience or availability the topmost piece of rice that is there you would pick up and see whether it is cooked or not from the pot however under a random sampling you must uh, you might stir it once and then say okay now i take a sample and see whether it is cooked or not so simply put haphazard sampling is done only based on easy availability and the things which are convenient to study so let's say <clears throat> there is a political campaign going on i am to study which party will win the elections now if i am doing let's say a exit poll result what i can do is i can take my neighborhood the nearest one go to them go to them and ask them uh, which party do you think would win and i can take a survey from them so that is what is a haphazard sampling i'm just doing the most convenient thing for me and i'm trying to represent that thing with the whole of the population which in most of the cases may turn true but there is a very high probability that it might not turn true as well but on the other case what would happen is i go outside a polling booth let's say every fifth person coming out from the polling booth i ask them i take a sample from let's say every 10th person or i take the sample independently at three different polling booth so what i am trying to do here is i am trying to have a random sampling and when there is a random sampling there is equal chance of being selected the next thing is within sampling we do have a list of 
uh, methods under which we can proceed with the sampling which we have covered in our other lectures on research aptitude so if you are interested to go into the details of the sampling the types of sampling the cluster sampling the multi-state sampling quota sampling you are more than welcome to refer those classes the next important thing is understanding the population parameter and the sample statistic so when do you call something as a population parameter based on the three simple parameters we could say mean standard deviation and variance we understand the population parameter if we are taking that for the whole of the population However, if I take same values for the sample, it would be sample mean, sample standard deviation and sample variance that aim to represent the population at a bigger go. So if I represent the terms, these are the signs for the population parameter, but the signs for the, uh, for the sample statistics would be a little different so this is how we understand how we represent the population parameter vis-a-vis -a, -vis a sample statistic now if we take the same example of rice being cooked as i already said the whole of the rice is what is the population and the spoonful of that that i am taking is the sample now if i am able to understand the mean variance and standard deviation for the whole of the rice it would be the population parameter. If I am doing that just for the spoonful of rice that I am trying to taste, it is the sample statistics. So a very simple connotation to help you understand the basics of sample and the population and why studying sample has been a very, very essential part of your inferential statistics. The next important part under inferential statistics is probability.